Alrighty, welcome in to number 10, the double digit episode of Offensively Accurate. Joining me today is going to be, we have Donnie in here. You can probably see him right here on screen, brother. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Everybody can go ahead and see you. I'm going to actually go ahead and click you up here. We are joined today by the River Oats. Um, River, at any point, make sure you raise your hand. I'll pull you up to the stage, brother, so I can get you to speak. I know it's a little bit different because it's not a normal Discord channel, but I, I'm right clicking to invite you to speak to get you put up in at any point. So go ahead and come up. Um, I know you might be setting up your mic. We have a few things to go ahead and go for, guys. The calls to action again, I'm terrible with these. Subscribe to YouTube at Atlas Thugged. Follow me on X, follow on Spotify. Share the show if you wish, if you want to, and if you feel that we said something you liked or you enjoyed what I said or you enjoy the mission, please do that. Uh, we appreciate that. I do have a few announcements I would like to cycle through real quick. The first one being is we're still aiming for 60 followers on Spotify. Um, once we get to 60 followers on Spotify, that allows us to monetize the podcast with ad reads. And then from there, we can proliferate the channel to a lot more and do a lot more with it. Um, beyond that, I also still am going to be talking about Dylan Brewer. I'm going to pull it up on screen here for you guys as well, at least my post of it. Um, I had reached out to Dylan Brewer. It was probably a few days ago at this point, And I was, I mean, obviously I was asking him to, to, to come on and join the show. Um, but he obviously can't, the legality of the issues, it's off the table, as he told me. So with that being said, he did say there were two things that could really help him out. Obviously the first is to donate if you can. But the second thing he said was, would really help him would be to push this story to get it to be more mainstream. And in particular, by getting Ron DeSantis to put his eyes on this topic. And this is largely due to the fact that it happened in Florida, obviously. Um, but one would expect, like, of all places for this to kind of maybe get hushed-hushed and put away and get a, and get some justice for this kid, you would imagine it would happen in Florida with who has been the strongest governor on social conservative policy, which has been Ron DeSantis. Um, so with that being said... I did also want to let you know that I am still uploading all of these episodes to YouTube, obviously until we get inevitably get struck with something because we're streaming here on X. I'm not concerning myself to speak to the correct opinion as you would have it. So inevitably there may be a day one of the episodes gets dinged and I'll get my second strike. I don't know what happens after the second strike. I never appealed my first one because, you know, honestly, F them. Um, so with that being said, I would actually go ahead and like to slide it over to the sponsor slot, which is the Mean Tweets, my only sponsor, first and only sponsor. They're conservative and mega apparel and clothing company. They have a phenomenal work ethic. I can tell you it all the time. It's one guy who essentially does this out of his garage with a printing press. Um, he's a really good guy. They recently moved. They've had some troubles, um, you know, with break-ins and things. They're in Seattle now of all places. So it got a little bit worse for them, for the environment. Um, but with that being said, Red Pill 10 promo code gets you 10% off anything on the store. It also helps me out too. And the best way I can sell this product is if you don't enjoy giving your political opinion to people with your actual mouth, your words, the best way to do that is to put on a t-shirt and you don't got to say nothing and people can read you just as it is. So without further ado, let me go ahead and let me swing it over to Donnie, brother. Who are you and what do you do? Well, I am Donnie Brook. I am an aging punk rocker, political junkie, father, family man, uh, kind of everything in between. Punk rock in politics. That is the Twitter bio of Mr. Donnie here. And Rooster, I am me. a river. I say Rooster. I'm inviting you to speak, man. If at any point you are ready, go ahead or raise your hand. I'm trying to get you up here to speak with us. Um, that we can get this interview started. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and swing it back to the Dylan Brewer story while we're waiting for Rooster to get set up here. Um, I'm going to do my absolute best to ensure that I am following up to date with this story because I, at this point I feel personally invested. It was kind of like the first person I'd ever reached out to who had been wronged in such a way. Uh, at least, you know, in like a political, uh, national, like news story level. And so I'd like to do as much as I can, my due diligence, and also obviously to help encourage him to come on the show as well. Um, but to every single step of the way, so any updates, you're probably going to hear me like a broken record. Um, but I think that this kid is due some justice, and I think we owe it to people to raise awareness to this issue. Um, I know me and Donnie kind of covered this to a good extent on the uh, some of the previous episodes. But I think the point still stands. The gay KK is very real, and their power is very, <laughs> very, very um, long and incestuous. It's, almost, it's, it's, it's everywhere, man. 
And if we can't get something like this happening in Florida, it's like what state honestly does have the hope that they can get justice done themselves. And I did Donnie, did you have any further comment on that while waiting for river? No, no. I mean, I think we said it all when we covered it. I think it's, it's bullshit. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're going to get grouchy about people driving on it, don't put it in the street. You know, that's kind of how I feel about the whole thing. Which is true, right? Like, yeah, you can't put, you can't, you can't put an art painting on the ground and expect it to be there in a couple of days. It's just some of the craziest stuff you can imagine. And yeah, I, I, I definitely threw him a donation. It looks like he's doing pretty well, but you know, legal expenses are expensive. It's not fun. A lot of it is just by the fact that you're paying, you're paying the court to do its process, right? You're paying the court to essentially do what it's supposed to be doing. And it sucks because it's like, you know, I'm already paying taxes, man. Are you making me pay twice? Like you kind of get that, that, that just garbage feeling, especially when you look at the fact that his goal was, you know, a hundred thousand. I think he even put it back down to 50,000 on the newest give, send, go. Actually, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll boy, click this link. Pretty sure he had changed it. So, okay. So we're moving, right? So he was at 29K a few oh, days wow. ago. So now we're at 33 out of 50,000. That's significantly higher than last week. Yeah. Uh, when we were doing the show about him, I went and found it. I think he only had 18K at moves. that point. And they, I think 10K yeah, of that was yeah, from we, Tim. Well, let's see, man. Oh, yeah. Timmy boy sent him some money. That was nice. And I thought, honestly, that was pretty respectable, you know, because I think we've gotten so used to, to Tim Poole being very... So, what, what what's the way what's the best way to describe this because it's not centrist very milk toast he was he's been very milk toast on certain issues because he doesn't like he plays to, both sides right right and so i was honestly amazed that he took such a hard-nosed stance that would you would imagine an average there are, christian there would. are centrists like there are centrists like tim that play both sides and then there are centrists like me that fight both sides <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I mean, I mean, honestly, why don't you go ahead and go into some detail on that? Like, what, what think? What do you think separates a milk toast fence sitter between a centrist who fights on both sides of the political aisle? Well, the, yeah, well, I mean, there's diff, There's a difference of playing both sides and trying to get both sides to the political center, right? Because, um, like I say, every time you go too far one way, you get an authoritarian boot. You go too far the other way, you get a different color boot. Um, so, like, there's a difference between fighting for the center being where the power is given to the people and staying in the center so that you can politically kind of play both sides and not really have to pick a side in the battle i've told you this before the center is my side i firmly believe that guy just kind of would go wherever because he was with vice and then you know he started his own thing and kind of played the center and then yep vice closed and now he's on twitter trying to hire those people that are writing you know just awful the the awful the, the, the 10 pieces. 10 photos of brad pitt's junk that he likes to commonly refer to that which i think is funny i i mean it, he's probably more honestly more so poking fun and like like at the whole idea of of, of these vice journalists ever getting hired by him and, uh, you know, it's funny because it's someone he's poked fun at a long time. He's even made a mention of even buying the, 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 the rights to Vice and then having it redirect to SCNR. Yeah, that'd be something that'd be worthwhile. I did one thing he did that I did really like was he took up the independent symbol because they had like independent trunk truck company was like a really good trucks for skateboards. <laughs> it was a really good company back in the day, but they used an iron cross. So once all this woke stuff went you know mainstream they had to drop it because of you know racism but he picked it up which i i did think was cool uh let me go ahead i think i might have some technical issues on my end unfortunately i think my discord might have froze on me donnie this is uh oh no yeah i'm not sure what happened I think it was just a bad, uh, let me go ahead and exit out of here. I can jump right back in. Okay. All righty. Unfortunately, guys, we're having a bad start to this. Oh, there's that guy. There we go. Okay, do we get River? Hey, there he is. I got him. Okay, yes, yeah, I can, I can brother. 
Perfect. Okay, we're back good. Okay, River. We are, for one, very appreciative to have you here. Sorry that it uh, we had some tech yeah, issues to get started. Me. We're definitely... I mean, yeah. let's go ahead and redirect it back to the beginning, man. I uh, go. We have some questions here for you, but I mean, the first thing, man, is 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 who are you? Like, what do you do? My name is River Oates. Um, I am a uh, I'm an EMT, emergency medical technician. I'm at a basic level, and I also uh, just accepted a position as a police officer. Um, spent five years in the Marine Corps as an infantryman. And I've been doing first responding AMS for about the last five years. And my whole contract was spent in the Marine Corps as a reservist out of Columbus. So, or I wouldn't say unfortunately, but uh, didn't get deployed anywhere, activated to go anywhere, or anything like that. So, interesting. And you said uh, that was five years. That was five years. Yep, five years and eight months actually. And then now you said you're at five years of being an EMT. Now you're working to be a, a police officer. Is that because you would rather be a police officer or you just find that there may be better opportunity? There's opportunity in both. Um, I just feel like I will get more of a, more of a return a police officer than I would as a EMT firefighter. Um, there's, there's benefits to, to both jobs. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I feel like police will just give me that that slightly more more edge to being happy. Um, you can ask all of my friends. I've spent probably the last year and a half, two years, trying to figure out if I wanted to take the police route or if I wanted to take the the fire and EMS route. So, so I guess what's made you kind of kind of falter since you've already been it for five years? What kind of made you think that that you didn't like it as much, or or you would be happier doing something else? So the five years that I spent in the Marine Corps, I think is what really of my uh, my decision making to go police. You know, you go in, you're expected to do your job. You know, you're with boys that their job just as much. Well, and, and what I'm saying also goes goes for fire and EMS as well. It's just I think I'll get more of that camaraderie and that brotherhood out of police than I would fire. Interesting. I honestly, like as somebody who's not been in any of those departments, I honestly would have thought I would have thought the other way around. I feel like maybe even policing is uh, in some departments might be a bit, a bit more of a uh, competitive due to the fact that it's very, very low, low tolerance on making mistakes. I mean, well, and, and honestly, let's, well, go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. It, it's, I mean, both, both jobs have its, competitiveness and you know making because both both jobs you have your your instances where you're going to be making quick tactical decisions on making sure that everyone's goal is going home at night like that's that's everyone's goal is to go home everyone's got families friends brothers sisters whatever whatever it may be we has got something to go back home to that's our first thing we can fix you know people's decision making and helping them think more tactfully or seeing the bigger picture when your actual bodily instinct is to tunnel vision we can fix that it's just making sure that you can apply it correctly at the end of the day to make sure not only you but the dudes around us go home it's totally fair and honestly let's treat this like round table donnie so at any point you want to jump in just cut me off too I well, let's, I want us to start with where you wanted to say, River. I know that you had actually kind of hit me up with a few ideas where you wanted to start. And I kind of separated them too, like with mental health, yep. keeping faith strong, working families separate. Like, why don't we go ahead and start with mental health? Like, I mean, what do you think, what do you think some of the, like the, the, the strongest or kind of maybe one of the worst things about the job that kind of affect your mental health? Probably the worst thing is uh, thinking that just because you wear, wear some sort of badge, whether it says fire or police, that you're there to ruin their high or ruin their day. and People That's... calling you MF or this and, you know, put a storm at you and whatnot. Like, that really does, it really, sometimes if it really gets to you, you, you start to question if there are actually good people out there. Just, just meeting a Joe Schmo, you know, like that's 
really the toughest thing is one not knowing and i guess not knowing but uh making sure that you know that there are good people out there and two um what was the other thing i was gonna say like you run you'll run into those people that you don't know from adam will give you probably the best interaction you'll ever have in your life you know a simple someone out of a bringing someone down from a high both fire and ems could turn into probably one of the worst days of your life because you in some aspects you don't know what that person has on you our first instinct as a as an ems provider is to make sure you're breathing to, to get you back down to ground zero and it's those ones that actually thank you and they realize that they're not ha- like they're not where they're supposed to be when my faith in humanity is restored and my faith kind of grows like well, that's- hope and pray that this person will start to think like all right i know i'm not doing good when i'm supposed to the wake up call because now i have 14 random dudes and and women in my house stu- stuffing up my nose and rubbing on me and stuff like i don't <laughs> i don't know so i guess to kind of put like summarize what you said which is like you kind of getting like the like othered like similar to how i mean honestly i really didn't honestly kind of think about that until you said that i'm mostly honestly most people understand like when they see a cop they have like an immediate personality change where like they're treating that person mm-hmm. as if they're just not even a human being they're like they're an yeah. authority person it's just like you know stay away from that person they're out to get you they're just there to like ruin your day i didn't honestly even right. ever extrapolate that to the other positions of like emt firefighter and if we, and to hear you kind oh, of yeah. say that even at that extent that honestly disheartens me because i wouldn't i might be the same person who might have a different level of interaction with the cop just because i feel like i want to protect myself a bit because obviously cops have a bit more leeway with what they can do in terms of authority but i would have never right. you know stretched that to like an emt or a firefighter you'd be surprised like is that go ahead donnie Oh, I was just going to ask, is that most of what you're dealing with these days is bringing people down? Honestly, contrary to popular belief, no, it's not. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So I'll answer Aaron's question first. So more often, I wouldn't say more often than not, but there are times that people do look at fire and EMS personnel. They think that we are just the scum of the earth. Like, Surprise! I'm not saying it's a lot of people. It's not as many as people That's as weird. people do think to uh, to police officers, but people do actually are out there that think that you know we're out here to ruin their good time or you know take someone to the hospital. Like we're just we're just doing it to collect a paycheck. That's just crazy. I know um, it is, and you know a bunch of dudes that would lay their life on the line for someone they don't know. And what's crazy is, and, and we're not going to name areas, but like, you're not, this isn't a big city you're working in, right? Like you, you would consider this probably a bit more rural. Absolutely. You know, both, I would say both areas that I'm now working in are, I would deem pretty rural. So like everybody knows everybody and it's not that hard to, to hear one thing. And then next thing you know, it's something completely different. Like, even though we're from the same area, I could still run into someone I don't know. A fantastic job at my job. My partner does a fantastic job at my job. We do everything we need to right. And that same person could say, can just come back and say, you know what, they were a little, they took a little long responding or they took a little too long on scene before they went to the hospital. Because people don't realize that we still have to do stuff on the ambulance we even decide which hospital we want to go to or that you want to go to or that we need to go to like there's a lot of decision making that happens on the back of a truck but not a whole lot of people not a whole lot of people know and what was your what was your question donnie i'm sorry oh i just you you were talking about you know a lot of times people think you're there to ruin their high and i was i was oh, yeah. wondering if that's most of the calls you're dealing with or even a good portion of them is bringing people down i know I know the heroin fentanyl thing is is a huge problem in my area. So it's it's honestly not as much 
as people as this as a lot of people would like to for you to believe it's still a problem do not get me wrong but you're dealing more with depending on the area that i work in we're dealing more with uh, an older demographic an older population average age is like 45 to 55 dealing more with health issues and stuff like that don't be wrong like well there'll be the occasional overdose you know mary jane bunch of her heroin bring her back out cool um i honestly think the last overdose that we had was about a month ago if not longer that's honestly kind of that's, a good metric right that's, you're only doing an overdose that's good a news month. i mean i would imagine yeah, it's, not, it's the one too many but that's that's i mean not, <laughs> right not terrible. and more often than not people so many people have narcan in their houses that we don't even by the time we get there they're go oh, no i didn't the usual spiel of oh i didn't take anything and maybe they didn't but you know it's usual i didn't take anything okay all right cool sign here that's funny that's wild i, I much much like atlas i've never heard that attitude towards like emt and and firefighters um i know we love like even at festivals and stuff where where we're partying nobody likes to see the cops we love to see mts there Mm -hmm. um and they have tents usually there um you know there there's some of our favorite people up here i I haven't seen that so much you don't see it as much and not a lot of people make face of it but it is it is definitely i've been yelled at i've been kicked at etched it's just crazy to me what what have you yeah but you probably weren't even expecting that whatsoever you're like well at least i'm not a cop and then you go in and you're getting treated like a cop like what is (laughs) this yeah like it's (laughs) honestly wild like it it took me by surprise or that i worked and it was it's just crazy that some people and don't get me wrong most of it is they're, they're acting in hysteria or haven't had time to grieve or they haven't had time to really process what's happening do you think that it's gotten worse do you think it's gotten worse since you've started i think it's pretty it's pretty it stays pretty pretty much the same throughout at least in the areas that i work i don't know what it's like in your bigger cities but it's pretty pretty level across the board um like your normal calls, or, you know, if we go on a cardiac arrest or you know, a pretty good, pretty good uh, car accident, you know, it just depends on how you never know how that person is going to react to something that traumatic. So that um, makes sense. It's more by proxy of the fact that they're literally just like completely out of order because they're traumatized by right. something, which yeah, I guess that kind of no makes one really sense understand- at it like that. No one understands. Like if if you don't know anything really about being a, a a heart attack, someone dies. Yeah, you may know how to do CPR, but everything else that will come after after you call nine one one, no one is no one, not a single person, unless you know what you're doing and you've been training in it. You're not ready for what you're ready where you're about to see. No, I can't even imagine. It is just. They're getting called out to so, just like you know someone who's been you know torn in half or something even to that nature mm-hmm. like i i you know i'm that's why you know you don't see me you don't see me dressed up in a badge man because i i know i probably wouldn't be somebody right. who could honestly handle a lot of stuff like that because i know it would probably like wear me down mentally i mean so that kind of takes on to faith then too like if your mental health is kind of getting drugged down the whole time do you think that kind of like battles with your faith and like you know trying to be the best example of jesus that you can be amidst all of that absolutely you know my um sorry pardon me uh, my biggest thing like i called out tones drop i'm praying that lord keeps me safe keeps my partner safe and whoever else is going to be there safe and then i i hope and pray that he gives his abilities through my hands and i i say think i don't know how to do anything else in this world i couldn't tell you how to work a drilling press a stamping press at honda <laughs> i honestly think that god put me on this world to through him through my hands through my personality because if you just show people 
you actually are a human behind your uniform and in your uniform, that you're a human, you're compassionate, you actually care, then that will speak so much more volume during the call, after the call, and well on later on into the into your life. I don't I couldn't tell you the amount of times that we've had people come by the station, drop off treats, cards, and saying thank you. That's that's awesome. That that's to me beautiful. is my reward. That's that's my reward through God. Like I pray to him that I'm able to do my job correctly for however long he needs me to. And then that's him giving my gift and in, in, in reception, I feel like. And it, you know, don't get me wrong, the, those those serious traumatic calls do weigh on you and you have to pray about it. You no, know, it's going to become a piece of you. Ask that God let it be a healthy piece of you and not a negative piece of you. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, you're essentially like, you know, at war. You know, you're always at like these warring moments really, like at people's worst mm -hmm. moments or like essentially their last moments. I mean, I mean, that brings oh, up yeah. the opposite side of it, too. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're in a rural area, I would imagine the majority of those people would be concerned if you work with who probably have similar values. But have you, uh, has there been any, like, you don't have to name names, they don't dox anybody. Um, but has there been instances where people have, like, or partners you may have had in the past that have had, like, very bad reactions and just, like, couldn't do the job, anything of that nature? Um... Not that I can think of. I mean, most places do a really good job of making sure that you're good to go after a traumatic call. Well, what's that There's, process like? Most places are. Like if you said that you so what will happen. Go ahead, my bad. No, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, just walk us through that process. Uh, like, like say if you do have something traumatic, like who's the, who's the first person you know you go and talk to or go escalate that to? So thankfully, I haven't had a call that I've had to actually physically go. So actually, yeah, I have. Um, the first person that I went to was my significant other at the time. And just the, the chain of events that happened was, was really, to be honest with you. Um, and sounds terrible. Like it, it did kind of mess with my, it did kind of mess with my mind a little bit. And obviously, you know, living in a rural area, you know, you know everybody, so the likelihood of you going on or an accident go out, and then next thing you know, you're rolling up on someone that you know personally. That part you do kind of have to set your your personality aside, and you have to let your job just take over. Um, first person I called was my significant other at the time, and just I talked her through it because she doesn't really like she understands the job, but she didn't at the same time. So I just I talked her through it and I'm like, this is what happened. And I remember seeing this. Give me hold on one second. Um, I just remember like just talking to her about everything and walking her through play by play about, you know, this happened at this time, this happened at this time. And then. You know, I remember seeing this face and I just like, over explain everything. So that way I got it all the way out. And after I was done, she just let me talk. And after she was like, are you done? I was like, yes, absolutely. Thank you. And I just felt it was a strong faith too. And she felt like it just felt like she was like there with me and being able to comfort me. And we were just talking on the phone. And that, that just made my life so much easier. Um, and then obviously there's some people that, you know, they don't want to go to their significant other because, then, you know, that's their home life. They don't want to take work home. So they'll go to their lieutenant or they'll go to their captain or even their chief or the HR person. And we'll try to help each other. But then if we can't help each other, then we'll help each other outside. So if we can help each other inside, you know, talk it out or maybe we'll go get some dinner the next day talk about things or what what have you um if that doesn't work then there are a plethora of different opportunities to help with first responder uh, traumatic events and ptsd and mental health you know a lot of your bigger departments are so big on that that they actually have designated people 
to do research and to promote it and to let you know that, hey, we are here. You can call us at any given time and they will give their personal cell phone numbers. Way like if so a call goes out at two o'clock in the morning and let's say some bad wreck happens on the outer belt of 270 in Columbus mm-hmm. and you feel like that you can't go to work now because of what you saw, they have people no matter what we have people. So it's just who you're comfortable with, with going to first. Normally I can get it done and feel good about going to the next call, talking to my significant other, talking to my captain, um, or just talking to one of my best friends that have known me enough and long enough through my career that I'm comfortable with telling them details about, about calls. Um, but yeah, it just really depends on, on, on who you're comfortable with talking to. And then I always take just a second just to, just to talk with God, you know, be like, Hey, thank you for one, keeping me safe. Well, thank you for allowing me to do my job. And three, allow me to keep continuing how to do my job. Those are the three things that I always say after a traumatic call. Thank you for allowing me to do this. Thank you for keeping me safe. I mean, to keep doing it because I'm, you're making me so good at this. It is unreal. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful mindset to have towards it. And it sounds honestly like it's very, very diverse. I mean, especially because obviously probably by the fact that everybody else has gone through something similar, everyone's got a good, you know, a good head on their shoulders and a good, and a good, a green positive connotation when it comes to the mental health aspect of it. I know a lot of my other instances and other, other avenues and fields may not have the, anything like that. In fact, it might even be non-existent, but it's good to hear that you actually have like a good process of support. And it sounds to me like you've honestly kind of got it down at this point, like a process on your own end where you kind of run through and run back in your head. And I'm like, okay, this is what happened. I'm okay. You know, you talk to God, you kind of like ground yourself again. And that's great, dude. That's honestly like, and I think people should take that kind of process. Obviously, if you don't even, if you're not an EMT, but to other traumatic experiences in life, like that's a really good way to kind of, you know, ground yourself back down to reality and kind of speak things out loud and find comfort in, 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 in Christ. And that's awesome, man. I, I wanted to actually get, open the floor to you, man. I, is there anything else that you kind of wanted to, to get, to give out about the EMT position? I know that one of the other things you had said was, uh, the difference between, you know, uh, being a first responder versus any of the, or being an EMT versus any of the other first responders, but anything that you wanted to kind of like, uh, you know, give time to, you want to talk about, go ahead. You know, it's a lot of people see first responding as, you know, you're going to war every day and you're coming home and you're drinking, you know, six glasses of bourbon before you go to bed or they see all these mental problems with, with these TV shows and, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not some. I'm not like some of these seasoned guys that have been on for 10, 15, 20 years. But I've seen my fair share of. of um, it's honestly, it's honestly not that bad. I've had the most fun in first responding. That I mean, it's it's equal to being in the Marine Corps. To be honest with you, not as much dumb stuff, but uh, just the brothers. You miss the dumb stuff. Yeah, compared to the dumb stuff, yeah, like there's there's times where you just you're you're if you're running the the ambulance and you're going to a fire call, it's a hurry up and wait because you're just gonna go there and they're gonna be like, all right, we don't have any patients, so now you're just sitting around and everybody else work. So it's a sometimes it's a. Well, how often do you kind of oh, sit I was around? Gonna ask, okay, uh, I, bet I was gonna ask how you're how your transition from EMT to policing is going where you are in that process. Um, so the transition was actually rather easy. Um, so I'll, I'll say this. Like I said, I spent five years and eight months in the Marine Corps and anyone that knows anything about the military, you spend a minimum six years doing, or you may spend a minimum of eight years a contract or in your contract under the military government. So army, Navy, Marine Corps, what have you. Six of those years, no matter what you are either active for four and then you go on to do an active reserve deal or 
reservist, you're doing six years of active drilling, and then eight years or two more years of you don't have to show up for drill. I was three months removed from being done with my contract, and that's when they started really pushing the vaccine really hard. And so the DOD, the, the, the secretary of the Department of Defense came down real hard. and He was like, you all have to get the vaccine by this date. And, you know, as much you as I love my pound sand, <laughs> actually, I did tell them to pound sand. And, you know, I actually tried because yeah. the military was one thing that I really it was probably one of the best things I've ever had happened to me. You know, the group of friends I was hanging with at the time when I signed up wasn't it. And my dad was really happy that, you know, I went. And so having to tell my dad that I was getting kicked out of the Marine Corps because I did get the vaccine was probably the hardest to say, or the hardest conversation I've ever had to have with him. Well, dude, but, uh, that's for one. So went, How do you feel about it? What's that? Go ahead, Donnie. Oh, I asked how he felt about it. My dad was a Marine for 17 years. And, uh, you know, uh, he talked me out of it when I was 18, but he would have been proud of me if that's why I got thrown out. So my dad at first was, was rather pissed. Like he, you know, what the hell are you doing? This, that, and the third, throwing out some cuss words. And I was like, wow, I knew it was coming. And he's like, man, I don't know where I went wrong with you kids talking about man. my older siblings. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, like, what are you talking about? Like, slow down for a second. What are you talking about? He's like, your mom and I went and got the vaccines. I don't understand why the hell you kids can't. And I was like, dad, I'm 28 years old. What a sibling is 42. There hasn't been a single day in my life that I haven't known you to not teach us to be a leader and not just to follow everybody else, no matter what is going on. If you want me to be honest with you, dad, you should be real proud. Because one, my other siblings, they have done research. They have done what they needed to do to make their respective decisions. Neither of them have it. Myself, I took an oath to the Constitution. Don't get me wrong, I did take an oath to the president, but the first thing on that word, on that, on that oath, is you will up, you will uphold the Constitution first, and then the president falls somewhere on later. The Constitution is what's first. Whatever was going on, and I'm not much into politics, but whatever was going on wasn't politically correct at all whatsoever. It wasn't constitutional in my heart. It wasn't constitutional in my mind. I prayed about it, thought about it, talked about it, did everything that I possibly could to allow myself to be okay with getting the vaccine and nothing in my mind, heart, faith. That's God. I was like, listen, show me some sign that it is okay for me get this vaccine single sign popped up i actually saw worse signs whenever <laughs> i had to transport a, a patient that had a heart blockage because they had the vaccine i'm not saying that it, it was due to the vaccine but they had the vaccine and it was oddly coincidental it was a cool coinkity that all of a sudden they're having heart problems at 40 50 60 years old right i mean dude well first so, of all let me say like very valiant of you like for one and two i apologize on probably a lot of americans for the fact that this happened to you in the first place i think it's egregious and it was unconstitutional that they forced the vaccine mandate on the entire military the way that they did and promise you for sticking up for yourself even in spite of knowing that your father and your parents like wouldn't respect that decision yeah and they eventually did you know once i talked to my dad i was like listen you know i took because he was in the military too and you know, I was like, we both took the same oath. I just happened to fall into a situation where I actually had to uphold it. And unfortunately, and fortunately at the time, give me one second. Oh, you're good, man. Uh, you're getting, uh, you getting, uh, you're getting called for, River. <laughs> sorry. My, my sister was asking if I, if I ate, but, uh, no. So. My dad, you know, just kind of was like, now I understand, like, you you made a decision. And he asked me, he's like, are you okay with the repercussions that may or may not come? And I was like, absolutely. They came down with 
general everyone that didn't get it by like december 31st or something like that they were going to get a general discharge under honorable conditions okay but it's not preferred so before i left i went to my first sergeant who was a down-to-earth guy like he even though he was a first sergeant he's a high-ranking guy still like understood us lance corporals corporals and people like that can I just keep wearing my mask for the next three months? I've already looked at the training schedule for the next three months. We don't have anything pressing. We have one field drill, one medical dental stand down, and we have a family day. Like nothing serious going to be happening in the next three months that I would need to elongate it. I just wear my mask and he's like, if it were my choice, absolutely. You have three months left. But since this is coming up from up high that he could even throw a rock and hit he had to say no so turning all my stuff and a month later they called me up and they're like hey we just want to let you know that it came down that they're going to start going by a case-by-case basis on the one that got booted for not getting the vaccine and they were putting me up for an honorable discharge honorable and then about two months after that I had a recruiter call me up. They're like, hey, we messed up as a military. Do you want to come back? And I said, respectfully, no. Hey, dude. Base. Not again. (laughs) Base. (laughs) I mean, dude, like, what do they expect, right? And it's a two-month turnaround on something that they were entirely not going to budge on. And then they're all in the seat. They're walking it back after it forced you into making, like, ridiculous life-changing decisions and you're all of a sudden in a different spot like i'd be the same way dude like i'd be like i already uprooted my entire self and, and turned my back on this like i'm not going to walk back into it two months later because who's to right. who's to know that they don't pull something six months even after that point and then entirely change what they had thought and then you're back in the same exact situation that you just escaped from absolutely and you know what the two biggest things that were really driving me away from it was one, didn't have a single sign from God that I should be taking it. And two, the vaccine care, the, the coronavirus came out in March and you had a vaccine for it in like three days or three months, four months. What about that doesn't seem fishy. Like yeah. it, it doesn't, it doesn't make they're, sense. It yeah, doesn't. They're also telling you to go get it injected into you at a, in a gas station parking lot. Right. So, like. <laughs> when in American society have they ever said, "Oh, you should go let some stranger inject you with something in that gas station parking lot?" Yeah, no, I'm not that. Nothing about it made me comfy. And my dad was like, "You know, you've gotten all these shots at boot camp," and I was like, "Yeah, they've had fifty and sixty years to perfect it. That's not going to mess me up." The only thing they haven't really perfected is the peanut butter shot that they get down at boot camp and you got to rub your butt on the floor for 15 minutes so your leg doesn't fall asleep the next morning. Like, other than that, like, <laughs> what? I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. They, they've had time to figure out measles and smallpox. You know, right. those weren't rushed out. I mean, yeah, you need to tell me that you found a vaccine for the deadliest, the deadliest disease there is this world has ever seen, but yeah, we can't fix breast cancer. We can't fix heart cancer. You can't fix lung cancer. What? Well, yeah. no. It's right. It's we're, just one of those we're things. Smarter than that. You don't even have to be that read in or that knowledge board to be like, what are you talking about? And it's not even like the fact that it was three months. It was the fact that it was an entirely new type of vaccine that had not been introduced to the public before. So not only do you have it coming right. out in a couple months, it's like, well, this is experimental mRNA, experimental mRNA. And who, who's going to feel good right. putting something like that in their body? Uh, don't get me wrong there are people that were well behind it and they went and got it and good for you like i've never been the type of person to judge you because you follow a b c and d like i don't care just as long I, and i get this asked a lot and i know you didn't ask it but i'm just going to throw this out there because i'm sure there's going to be someone out there that finds my name finds out where i work finds out what i do whatever let's hope not let's i don't care not. what time well, I don't care what type of person you are. I don't care what, how you identify, what you do for work. I don't care. Just as long as you are a good person, put good things out there in the world, you are a good person to me. You automatically have my respect. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you believe. I don't care who you follow, what you do, what music you listen to, 
if you like to wear cat ears, I don't care. Just as long as you are a good person <laughs> to me, my family, and my friends, and everyone else in the world, then do whatever you want. This is America. We are known to be able to do whatever we want. Why can't we all just live happily together and happily as one, as quite literally on our currency and everything else that we throw on there as Americans is united. Well, that's not very crazy. united and haven't been. Well, I was sitting here thinking that you would have, it would have been around the time you would have been EMT getting the vaccine. So to hear that it was because it happened when yeah. you were in the military, I was like, I didn't know it happened even earlier than that. So I guess by the time then you made the transition from Marines to EMT, had they already lacked the vaccine mandate at that point? No, they didn't lax the vaccine until. So I got out in January of 20. Sorry, 21. Yeah, yeah. And then I got my basic in March of 21. They called me back in May of 21. It, that's real. Yeah, that was like what, like a three month turnaround. So then it was already okay, gone by yeah. the time you go to the EMT, right? So that you probably yeah, and there were some didn't departments. Care. There were some departments that actually did try to did try to mandate it for employment, um, and and so they actually did. They did put out in the military that you could try to they uh, get a waiver for it, so you wouldn't have to get it, whether it be religious or views or what have you and the the approval rate for that was so stupidly low like no one got a waiver unless you were oh i can't remember i can't remember what uh, what denomination you were spiritually but the the approval rate just because you know you're a christian and you, you could give a scripture and saying i can't remember what i used for it said no to me they said no to pretty much everyone that i know the first department that i worked for they tried to push it down that you have to get it you could put in for uh for a waiver spiritually got it i got it when i when i got there and actually i might still have it give me just one second i'm You're pretty good. sure i do still have that uh that uh that document and this is the one they denied Have you, you on? The, uh... No, this is the one that they approved me on. Okay. Have you seen the compilation of like newspapers and the effectiveness of the vaccine going from 100% safe and effective to zero? Really? Yeah, somebody compiled all the newspaper articles where it started and they were saying 100% safe and it just goes from 100 down to zero through all of these oh. different articles that were written about it at the time. I think I saw some. No, I haven't similar. seen that at all. Yeah, and there's been releases lately saying that it's giving people issues with their blood pressure, hearts, blood clotting issues, things like that. Let me actually pull that up. Um, there was it was it a New York Post? The New York Post released the article of. Uh... Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on screen, River, so you can see this from the New York Post. So this is actually if recent. You, if you can find the compilation of like those newspapers from going from them saying, "Oh, it's 100 percent safe and effective" to literally zero, that is wild. Because you could see it, like, and it has dates and stuff, and you could just see, like, like who lied to you me? Know, you know how how much they lied to you exactly. And that's crazy. Again, well, you'd even said River that you don't, uh, you don't, uh, you don't follow politics, follow to, you know, or care that much about the politics of it. But I guess you would probably align like more conservatively, just based on faith. You know, I guess it's probably where you find yourself at. So, you know, it's I luckily had a, um, luckily had a captain at the department that I first worked at that was. Uh, that was spiritual as well. And he was actually just getting into being a spiritual person. And him and I kind of put our heads together to write this, um, to write this waiver. 
And like I said, they 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 approved it, but oh man, I'm gonna have to. Well, I'm glad I they can't approved find you. it because it's funny. Oh, absolutely, you're yeah. bringing up these these uh, these stories. It's, it's literally very very similar to uh, our good friend Thane. Um, and he's and he's told this story before. He won't mind us telling it again. But he he had tried to do the same thing, which was apply for religious exemption. Um, and I think at that time he was just a he was a an RN working for somewhere some hospital, and I oh, hear it is, and he gets denied, and and he thought it was just the most insane thing because he was like you know what is my option then at this point like if they denied the exemption and that's my only way to waver myself out like I have to quit at this point, and so it's just sad to see Absolutely. that so many people just got forced out of what they were doing. But yeah, go ahead. What are the details? That, that was. Waiver? All right, so I'll, I'll just, do I have time to read it word for word, or do you just want me to kind of give me a clip notes? Oh, go ahead. I mean, if it's super long, give us a clip notes, but go ahead if you think you can get it off. Um, so basically it says, I'm requesting religious exemption for getting the COVID vaccine. The Lord sends everyone, the Lord sends every one of us down to earth to do one job. The Lord has sent us down here with one body to do, do these jobs he has chosen us for. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, work heartily. For the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Uh, goes on to say, um, I wake up each morning uh, to show me a sign for the vaccine in order to do this work through Him better. He hasn't shown me anything. The Lord has given me a shield through His of His love and His protection through all the COVID nineteen. I've not contracted it at all. Give me protection for twenty five years from fault breaks, disease, cancer, sickness in general. The Lord puts us on the earth with one body. Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you from who you have who you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought from a, you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. I feel this vaccine will hinder my temple from being God's perfect place. Even though I do have the, the flu vaccine, the Lord has shown me that it will better my abilities to do his work. I stand firmly on my beliefs my, and my understanding from what the Lord has given me and shown me through the months. I trust in the Lord that he has shown me the right way. I know the Lord, my, I know my Lord will keep, will keep me protected through these times. He has kept me protected thus far, and I believe he has no ambitions to stop protecting me anytime soon. Dude, that's amazing. It's not like you actually put some, you really put some work into that, lining that out for them. Oh, absolutely. We were up until about four o'clock in the morning, reading through scripture, making it to where they basically can't, they can't deny it. Yeah. Making it as bulletproof as possible. I mean, what, I'm, what would your reaction then have been if they would have denied that? Um, we were planning a mass exodus. Really? Interesting. We were planning a mass exodus. Yeah, okay. There was a lot of us that, I mean, there was, come to find out, they didn't really, like, they read them, but they didn't really care. You could tell by some, like, there was one guy that put down that he was his own God, and it was against his own religion, which it somehow got accepted, don't know how, but had any of us what? had, yeah, yeah, uh, had any of us gotten denied, we would have, um, there would have been a mass exodus of this company and they would have unfortunately had to shut down doors until they had enough manpower to even run one truck. I mean, uh, it sounds it like it seemed like Christians were mostly getting denied and then other religions weren't in the military. Yes. Uh, like I said, in the military, I can't remember what, what religions were getting approved because there were some approvals, but if you were just basic, I know a couple of Catholics, I'm Methodist. I know some Baptists that like some of those dudes weren't getting approved, but in the civilian world, it seemed like they're a little bit more lax because even though they're trying to do the politically correct thing, they also know that if they lose manpower, then everything else is going to go to go down the drain. So like, don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful and I'm very thankful that they actually to read them and they could tell who actually cared about not getting in i put thought into it and you could actually tell the ones that didn't really care they just wanted the job but 
I was going to go from that department and find a department that didn't force a vaccine. Um, I was prepared to work as a server until I found that place. And luckily, luckily they weren't too hard on making sure that we had vaccines as employees. But Did you, I appreciate your been, conviction. It's definitely been um, trying, you know, hopefully try to make sure my faith is strong and sure that I now and don't get me wrong I'm I consider myself a newer Christian you know I drink I smoke cigarettes every once in a while I dip I cuss like a sailor don't get me wrong same here brother I, I'm, not, work I'm not perfect <laughs> but I I, too. but I wake up knowing every day that God's gonna work through me making sure that I can do my job safely let people know that there are good people in the world because just because throw on just because I throw on a different type of uniform than your normal blue collar guy, you know, a hard hat, hard hat, boots, jeans, what have you still the same person that my family loves. My family has grown to see become a man, my friends, you know, the ones that, that have seen me they know they know who i am behind the badge and it's my i feel my job to show people i may be a police officer yeah i may be an emt but i'm legitimately there to help you that's my whole and sole purpose this officer i'm there to enforce the law actually if you do something that's against the law i have to do my job right and that is part of that i do have to really hope and pray that I don't lose sight of is that this badge or this gun me more of a head that some people think that I already do just because I have a badge and a gun. The same dude. I'm still the same guy. I'm still the same guy that likes to go out and drink bush lights on the weekend, hang out, watch football, you know, bush lights. You know, gonna friends, drink bush diesel. We need some bush heavy news. <laughs> oh, sir. I graduated from that, man. You know that. <laughs> it's funny. I'm it, still on it. I don't drink that much anymore. But <laughs> if I had it makes to. you feel any better. As a, as a former criminal, even, even when you arrest people, usually they don't take it personally for too long after you're done with them. And that's good <laughs> to hear. You know, it that, might be different in a small town. <laughs> right. Well, listen, well, I, I did want to I walk, wake up every. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, my man. I keep cutting you off. No, I was just going to say, I wake up every morning blessed. I wake up another day. I set my feet on the ground. The, I, I just say a quick, Dear Lord, thank you for waking me up. Allow me to do better today. Give me safe. Give me home. And I just go on about my day. That's a beautiful mindset to have, dude. That'll, hopefully, we can, hopefully, if anybody's listening out there, dude, they can just... Honestly, take your conviction that you have throughout this, your mindset, and apply it, dude. And be, just even on those basic levels, dude, people will be doing a lot better, especially that whole, you know, being a good person. Because really, that's that's dude, honestly it's one of the player. simplest thing. Is if just some all of us just were our best selves, you know, would we really have any problems? Like, no, not at all. I I did want to go back to something you had said about the military, though, because it caught my attention. You had said that. There was like it seemed to be that there was one denomination or some group of people who were getting theirs permitted, but it seemed like everyone else's were getting denied. Do you do you know yeah. like what denomination that was or what group that was? I don't. Um because it, like it's been so long ago and it was just a quick it was a quick conversation between my friends and I, you know. We we read up on it and we were trying to see like our likelihood. Like we put in our our exemptions, and then we would do the research of what are the likelihoods of getting it accepted, and it was just a quick like we obviously being in the military, you know, a lot of people and duty and the different branches. So across the board, it was a no unless you were like die hard this in something else. I can't remember what it was specifically, but. We were just run of the mill, me and you. I go to church every once in a while, but I have a strong faith. 
no matter how you worded it. And that's, say no. and that's good though, dude. Like, <clears throat> and it's sad because I feel like the people like, like you and I, who kind of have that very like honed in, like small town kind of built into us. Like it's really easy to see and see the differences between the guys who didn't have like that very strong sense of self agency. I imagine you see it in the military where you, you feel like you are a lion amongst a bunch of sheep where you watch a lot of these guys do things where you're like, bro, why do these, do you not even think for you did that? Um, I did want to push it here. I know you, I know you don't follow politics that well. <clears throat> this is going to be a hard segue because that's when I honestly get some okay. of your, some of your opening thoughts on some of these things as somebody who is a first responder, okay. right? Um, yep. Ha. Huh. Regarding the regarding this upcoming election, do you have a horse in the race? Are you paying attention or is this something that you don't you just don't care about? What I've come to learn about politics is everyone is corrupt in their own special way. It's just using who seems to be the least corrupt. And like I haven't voted the past two elections. The first one was when Trump was first going into office. The reason I didn't vote then is because I didn't have a good enough idea and I didn't have a good idea or a amount of information to make an educated decision because that is a big choice. Yeah. Obviously. Um, so I, I, I opted out to, uh, opted out to not vote. And then this last one, it was just, to me, it was two dead fish in the water. Is if Trump was reelected, <laughs> then stuff was going to happen even worse than what it already was. And if Biden got elected, which he did, knew the background of it. I knew it's going to. Ha- I knew everyone knew that Biden was going to get elected, no matter how you decided to just it, pop it, pull it, whatever. Just seeing how everyone else was going to to handle that and. They, my words don't really carry that much weight because I didn't vote. But seeing this dude talk does not, <laughs> not make me proud, to be honest with you. And I have a bunch you, of guys that is it the visible dementia? Want to go back to the military? <laughs> <laughs> but literally, sometimes I'm just like, how are you like? How are you even? How are you even here? Like, I don't understand how you're even here talking to these people. I have dudes that want to go back in the military, but they don't want to do it under Biden's administration. I can understand. Like they, that. Some of them don't have a good segue into the civilian world to go back because that's all they know. That's what's good for them, but they don't want to do it under Biden's administration. I'm like, dude, I get it. Some dudes that don't want to go, I want to go back, but they want to, they don't want to do it under Trump. So it's just a matter of, which two dead fish you want to pick up out of the pond. I mean, yeah, you you imagine you have Biden out there and he's, you know, just like, Oh, we're going to war with, with China. And then next thing you know, you're getting sent to something that you have no idea, like why you're there. Why are we going? And everyone's, why would you want to be a part of part of a bad mission? I get that dude. Like that's rough, especially hearing it from a military, like uh, from your perspective. If I ask what you didn't, what you didn't like about Trump. Is there something specific? Uh, you asked if I liked Trump. No, no, I asked what what you didn't like about him. Mm. Um, obviously, as a businessman, like policy wise, honestly, I didn't really know much about his policies. I see, I try to look at it as who's a better person because I don't know. It's it's hard to say that someone is actually a president when. I feel like it's leaning more towards the president doesn't have the final say or he does. He's not speaking for himself. He's got other people speaking for him and then he's just being told what to say. Um, so in that regard, I don't have a logical or I wouldn't say logical. I don't have an educated answer. That's Some okay. of his policies that well, I'm just. I, I would say I'm just kind of curious, right, because we talked a little bit. You're you're going into policing. And you're not into politics, so I, I'm not going to expect you to be super educated on it. That wouldn't be fair. But 
um, I would say one side of the political aisle seems to really not like that profession. Absolutely. And it's, it's grown just due to Donald Trump, you know, because people think that he caused all the riots and doing enough with the laws to make it, you know, harder for, for police officers to do their job or make sure, you know, they have to do A, B, C, or D. And what people don't realize is responders, yes, they go to school. Yes, they, you know, do their basic training. But just like with anything in any job that you do, no matter what it is, you're going to learn more from experience than you are in a book. Don't get me wrong. Learning from the book is good because you have a good base. You know where to pull information from, but you're not going to be able to fully do your job well without experience. T basic. I'm not allowed to do a lot of things and still do some things that are out of my scope of practice just solely based on experience and having to step up when things aren't going necessarily the way that we need them to. So I've had to step up and do something out of, outside of my role to make things better because of my experience and the trust that I've built with everybody. You know, you, you go through 700, and I'm sure you guys know this fact, you go through more hours of training in barber school than you do as a police officer. Okay, so are you talking about how little the training is or how, how much or how defunding the police has been? And you think that there should be a lot more going into it? No, I don't think I. Th I think it's perfect. Honestly. Like the amount of stuff that you learn oh, in the academy is really? the amount because you're just getting a base. That's all it is. You're just getting a base. You're learning the Ohio Revised Code. You would have to go to school for a very, very. You would almost have to go to school as long as a lawyer. Go through everything in the Ohio Revised Code. Ohio Revised Code is about as thick as a Big Mac. To put that into perspective. I don't know a lot of cops, but I do have a few friends, and I, I have not heard any of them say policing is perfect. Um, certainly not lately. No, 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 no. no I wouldn't say policing is perfect by any means, but like the base training, I would say is perfect. Uh, maybe I'm gotcha. maybe I'm getting the the question misconstrued here, but no, I guess oh, I was just I was curious because he he asked you about the defund the police movement and okay, yeah, that, um, but yeah, I mean. People just see people just see what we're what they're doing. They that and that's where really the the world's clash is. They see one thing. And I've seen a bunch of police officers try to explain why they are having to do things. the the other The other party just doesn't want to listen. And it kind of goes back to what Aaron said earlier: is if people just time to understand one another. There wouldn't be any problems in this world. So I, I bring this up when I say this. So I guess with you saying that if you think the policing is like it's perfect, you would then, I guess, be against defunding the police. Because if they were to fund anything, it would obviously uh, affect your training. It would remove some of that. Um, But do you can you see my screen, River? I want to make sure you actually see this before I play this clip, because I don't know if you've seen this or not. Um, This is really relevant to what we're talking oh about gosh. here. Um, And this is what's called Enjoy. this called this into question, which is, and, and, I'll, and I'll summarize this before we watch this clip. Um, people who have been long, who are, I guess, opposed to defunding the police, have actually taken the counter narrative, which is, in fact, they believe that policing are underfunded and they need vastly a lot more training because they think that the lack of training is the reason why that there are so many instances like things like George Floyd, like things such as an acorn falling on a car or like you know, the female cop incidents just shooting through windows because they in, in different instances like that. So that's why I have this clip up here. Um, This clip was famous. I can't remember off the top of my head where exactly it happened at. Um, But an acorn fell on this cop's car and he immediately fired at his own vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and play this real quick so everybody can see this. Um, If you haven't seen it already or if you have seen it already, you'll probably probably not find it that funny given the rest of the details surrounding this. Make sure the volume is actually pulled down a bit too. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play this thing. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots 
fired. You know. That's essentially all we really need to see from it. Um, so a couple things though. The acorn hit the top of his car. There was a person handcuffed in the back seat of that car. He yells he's hit. He was not hit. Nobody was shooting at him. And this has caused obviously it's another one of those things where it's a nice microcosm that encapsulate the issue at hand, which is people think that cops need vastly more training to prevent instances like this from happening. Now, I don't want you to think that you're in a gotcha moment, because I'm not, I don't want you to sit here and think you got to take a, an opposite uh, position to us. That's why I just wanted to no, see if you've seen this. That's, that's, that's pure footage stupidity. Watch, like, that's very tough to watch, because in, in basic peace officer school, you go through firearms training, so you know what a gunshot sounds like. I haven't grown up around guns my entire life, the better part of the past six years, absolutely, I've been around enough guns to know what sounds like what. I couldn't think of a single acorn all in <laughs> due to gravity onto a car that sounds anything like a gun shot. And when I even like watched that, the video, that's what there, I thought, too. The, the perp did have a suppressor on the firearm that they found him with. Not that that makes a huge difference, but it does make a slight difference. Um, you know, it does sound a little bit different. I mean, uh, man, a that suppressor guy humiliated not, himself into, into oblivion. He did. Like, it's, even with a suppressor, it's not going to, it's still a very distinct sound. Like, mm -hmm. people think that a suppressor just silences the gun. Oh, no, I've, it I've, doesn't. I fired one. I'm, I know it is, it, it's not silent at all. Right. Um, but <laughs> like it, it just dispenses just the gap. I'm just trying to help this poor cop out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to help him with. Like that's, yeah, no. And you can, you it's can show rough. that to any, any good police officer, any good one, like that actually gives a crap about his job. He, he needs to go back to training or he just needs to give up his badge because one, that's absurd to, to, to react like that. He, he I'm glad two, you think so. <laughs> two, and two, to unload a full magazine is absurd. Well, then his partner comes over and he points at the car and says, shoot there. And then she also unloads on the car. No. Yes. Even, yeah. even, even if the military, you are trained, like if you take shots, um, from a direction, yes, your first instinct is to return fire, but then you you move to cover and concealment. As and as you're doing that, you're assessing the situation. It's giving you one to two seconds. This this dude's not calm whatsoever. Not calm on any way, shape, or form. His first instinct is to listen. The combat rolls. <laughs> <laughs> like he. He falls to the ground, first off. He acts like he got shot. Not good. Yeah, he, right. he's fighting ghosts. Like, if you if you hear a shot go off, your first ink, yeah, yeah, it might be to hit the deck, make yourself a smaller target. You're not going to start crawling towards a driveway. <laughs> which he might have no rolled on a rock when he was rolling around and thought that was the bullet. It that better have been a, a really big rock. <laughs> <laughs> like, that and it's it's people like that 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 put us in a bad light like i don't understand why like he i i don't i hope that his supervisors and his chief permitted him correctly he resigned there, actually. there are there are bad police i hope that guy's delivering pizzas yeah <laughs> I, like, I don't know I don't... he's i don't want him anywhere near a badge if he's working oh. for domino's i'm okay with that <laughs> but if i was that guy i would be living in a cave somewhere because he, everybody saw that video that everybody is so bad and there, there there are people out there that that do think that that's and that's what i'm trying to say there are people out there that will see this one video 
I think all police officers, like our first, our first thing, <laughs> there's people out there that think that our first instinct is just a, just to shoot people. That is not it whatsoever. Right. And Nine if, times out of 10. What was going to say this at cherry on top? Go ahead, River. I didn't mean to interrupt you. What's that? No, you're good. It's just like, they'll see that. They think that's what every cop is out there to do is just to shoot and, and stack bodies. That's not police officer. Yes. Your, your actual, he did miss terribly. Like, I would and like lost. to see his yeah, scorecard. He, luckily, the guy in the back is okay. <laughs> but Miracle of God, he's okay. <laughs> Yeah, our legitimate uh, the actual certificate that you get the academy is the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy. That's the academy that you go through. Ohio Peace. And it's spelled like peace, like we're trying to make peace. Mm-hmm. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep the peace, make everybody happy. We go up to a domestic violence call trying to figure out on both parties what went wrong. I want to take people to jail. We don't want to do that. We don't want to separate families. We don't want to make everyone's day terrible. We don't want to go out and shoot somebody. That's the last thing that we want to do because that one whole lot of paperwork that you have to do. And two, a whole lot of counseling that you have to do. That's a whole lot of investigations. Now you're pulling resources from everybody else when there are bigger problems to worry about any given city that you go to that has a police department. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure this dude is a great dude. Behind the badge, I'm sure he's a great dude. But he has so much more to really talk with himself before he ever gun belt and a badge back on. And that's what I really want. This is for him. No, it's not. I mean, that's one thing that I, I would really love to push. And I'm glad Aaron, you gave me this opportunity to be get on your platform and tell this to people. There are some people to some, like to some people, this job is easy. It's natural. Anything that you do, like you're not phased, you're not anything. You're able to think clearly in any situation possible. Guarantee you those dudes that these jobs they had a long talk with themselves like can i do this go to work leave work at work and then go home a father be a brother be a dad be be somebody yeah and that's one thing that if there are people listening that you do do this job and whatever you may thinking i really hope and pray that the time that you leave the threshold of your department time that you enter the threshold in your home you use that time to transition because you were just a warrior you just got done protecting people whatever you needed to do to get back home now it's time to hold a baby if that makes sense yeah to be a true man, man a true person we actually talk about being being a gentle warrior a lot me and absolutely uh, yeah like you have I mean, to we're both big proponents of that one thought absolutely in one day you should be able in theory to be able to kill a man and a few hours later hold a baby kill a man if you have to and yeah. that's like absolutely have to saying that like i said we're not out here to just stack bodies if there comes a chance or, or there comes a time that you have to fight somebody or you have to get physical with somebody or use deadly force have to be able to be okay go home and and hold a baby the most gentle thing in this world yeah you gotta be able to discern whether it's when it's necessary like you know and it's gotta be absolutely like rapid fire decisions like to me this is like i don't really know if it's more of a training aspect than it might it's more so like a psychological failure like i'm more so like concerned to the fact that like how he passed a psychological test or an anxiety test or a stress level test Cause it's clear that like at the slightest drop, obviously no pun intended that he lost his, you know, he lost his stuff, lost his marbles. Well, right. let's remember, we, we, we don't really know a lot about him personally. You don't know if he's got PTSD that was acting up or, you know, what else was going on. Um, not That's making fair. excuses for him again. This guy should never be near a badger gun. I, you know, delivering pizzas is where I think he should be. Um, but you know, uh, a lot of cops, you know, like River, come from the military and 
you know, a lot of them, um, you know, actually, you know, had to deploy and do some gnarly stuff. So, and I was actually just getting a hit on that, Donnie. Like some dudes that were in Fallujah, Desert Storm, that came out and became a police officer. And obviously, those those two involvements were some of the deadliest involvements that America has ever seen. And an acorn wouldn't phase them. Like I don't. Yeah. I'm really curious to see. I mean, I read. know. I know my dad always has a tough time around uh, Fourth of July and fireworks and stuff. You know, right. loud noises. I've seen. I mean, I've lived a pretty good portion of my life on a military basis, and I have seen things that you wouldn't think would set these guys off. You know, they're actual killers but you know uh, once they come back they're not always the same and and you know i've seen you know fireworks or a car backfiring really affect my, my dad um so yeah. and you're just, you're 1000 percent right donnie like it's there are dudes that come back like that but when you're in a situation like this where I mean, if you're able to back that up just a smidge, right, right when he's returning fire, this yeah, dude, yeah. he's in a very. Uh, keep going, keep going. I think right here, this is the second time. Right there, yeah, right about there. Okay. All right, that's the first volley, yeah. So, already, just based off of looking at it, he's in a pretty pretty populated area whether it be indoors or outdoors he's in a populated area right like apartment apartment complex building. yeah it's a townhouse that's residential right like my first thought is like you you were taught that you have to be able like there's so there's so many like you don't know who's all outside who could just be walking by and not know what the hell's going on like yeah. So many things and factors that you have to take in, into consideration in that two seconds. In it, he thinks he's life or death, but you really have to, really have to think like, there's an apartment building behind there. One of these bullets could ricochet, go through a window, go through a wall. Next thing you know, I have multiple, multiple people. I mean, dude, it's a. I mean, it's a miracle that that didn't happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, that's what's that one girl that that actually happened to? Uh, oh crap. What was her name? Thinking of Breonna Taylor. Where that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was in uh, Kentucky on a no knock raid. Yes. Like, don't get me wrong. There are, I haven't read fully into it. Times you are in the wrong place at the wrong time, but also at the same time, when you're clearing that house, it's the same thing. You're making sure you're you're safe first. Present like if you're done, if you're with a threat, you deal with the threat accordingly, and not just slinging lead because you think that's the mineral of the day. Like it's well, like then I guess the mineral of the day. Well, I guess then what would your what would your solution to that be, River? If you wanted to fix all of these problems as efficiently as you could, what would your solution then be? There's only so much realistic training that you can do without running the higher risk of serious bodily injury as a police officer. Um, you know, yeah, as much training as possible, and, and right, and and don't get me wrong, like there are a lot of like now they've passed laws where officers now have to have continuing education hours. Um, you know, there's a plethora of defense classes that you can take, and a plethora of different scenarios that you can put yourself into. There's case laws, there's YouTube, there's there's so much stuff that you can do on your off time to perfect your craft and i know it's and i know it's odd to to call police off or, or policing a craft but it truly is because in order to be good at your craft you have to divulge yourself into it so that way when you are presented with situations like this it just becomes second nature right 
like you're master your profession. Aaron, I know, I know, with, right? I know with your family, like they've done, they've had to do some serious years and some serious training to get to where, where, where they've become and where they've, where they're at now. Right. And I'm sure if you ask any of them, they will tell you countless hours. People always say countless hours, countless hours, countless hours. You're given 752 basic hours. It's up to you and your department to be like, all right, I need more hours. I need this. I need that. They will, if they're not able to send you, sometimes, yeah, you're going to have to dish out the money, but you're making yourself better. Like with sports, you're not just going to get better going through the regular season yeah. and to make the playoffs and win a, win a championship. Like you have to work in the off season. There's some dudes that work out year round. They will go to 19 different camps. Maybe you learn the same thing. Yeah. But like th- this is coming back to your basics it's that repetition. in my eyes. It's coming back to your basics. Yeah. Well, you'd said earlier, I mean, making Rep- it literally. second nature, you know, just making all of these like, you know, five, you know, six, seven, eight step methods into second nature, just making it muscle memory. You don't got to think yeah. about doing nothing. And it's, it's true. Like, like, I mean, the way that I kind of think about it though, is like, cause and I'm sure with you too, with them being in the Marines as well, like I've been in a part of different brotherhoods, whether it was like from football or, you know, whether it was just like, you know, you know, different basic friend groups, however they're structured. Um, you know, you kind of get that feeling where, men are very, very understanding of hierarchical natures. Like men are very, very, what's the word? Because we're men, we're biologically in tune with these kinds of things. We, uh, we kind of, we kind of hierarch ourselves and we are much more keen right. to, to just adapting and, and working alongside it. Cause we just are, we just built that way. Mm-hmm. So when I right. see something like this, I'm honestly not even thinking like a psychological test, you know, make a guy take like a, you know, squeeze this ball. How many times we measure your heart rate? Like nothing like that. Like maybe it needs to be more like a discernment from the order and veteran officers. Like even if the guy hasn't made a single mistake and you just kind of have that feeling like this brother is like the weakest link, maybe it's something like that where they go, Hey, like we've all went ahead and decided democratically, like we're voting you off the force. Um, we know you haven't made any mistakes, man, but, um, you know, we each got, you know, we each got signed affidavits from all the rest of the officers and we've kind of decided all together, like this isn't a good fit for you. Um, we're glad you tried it out, but you know, better luck elsewhere. Do you mean, do you think, you think that would be a better way? You know, if you have the veterans who have been there the longest way, actually having a hands-on methodology of like who they bring up into the police force, obviously it's probably not legal or could it be implemented that way. But I kind of see that as honestly being a better way of making sure that only the strong ones stick in the police force. I think that it builds you a pretty corrupt police state pretty quickly. Yeah, it's true. fortunate thing with, with policing. And, you know, police and fire mainly. EMS is a close second, but you're not going to experience as many. Uh, like, don't get me wrong, in EMS separated, like in, in the department that I work at from fire, then you're going to experience your own things. But when you're a firefighter or your police officer, it's unfortunately things like this, you're forced to be reactive instead of proactive because someone could appear to not be able to do this job worth worth anything they can turn out to be one of the best police officers one of the best firefighters that you've ever seen in your life fortunately on paper and in training they could be dog know exactly what they're doing they can know their stuff what have you but it's when people both men and women are put in a situation like this where they're kind of forced it forces their hand to to knuckle up and be like all right what am i about and hopefully and i understand you know we kind of really dogged on the guy but hopefully he took this and understood like okay maybe this isn't for me like maybe i'm not built for this and that's perfectly fine not every guy not every woman is built to be a police officer not everyone is built to be a firefighter not everyone is built to do these kind of jobs it takes a completely different type of built person let me to just do t- these jobs i'll hit you right here do you think women should be police officers absolutely you think so this goes back to like i said earlier i, I don't care what you are who you identify as what you do if you if you go into a job that is male dominant you better expect better Expect to be expected to do the same job as everybody else. 
rookies. I, Come join the police force. We need the numbers. But be expected to do the same thing as everybody else. Don't expect to get a free ride because you're a woman. Some pretty badass woman out there. Badass woman. But, but they did lower the Marine Corps standards for women to be able to join. So you're saying you'd like them to be able to do the same job, but the Marine Corps said they can't do the same job, so we have to lower the bar. In what way did they lower the bar? They they lowered the literal requirements that women have to do to meet their PT requirements. Right. It was all the physical stuff, right? Yeah, all the, uh, all the PT requirements. Phys- because if you take an average... If you take an average woman on the street, you can't expect them to do 20-something, 12-something pull-ups. But wouldn't you want them the, to be able yeah, to do you that? You just said that you want them to be able to do the same job, which is kind of right. where I land on the whole thing. If they can meet the same requirements that men were required to meet, I think then it would be silly to keep them out. But the fact is that they can't meet those requirements, and that's why the branches had to change the requirements for females. I think if I think if they I mean it does kind of suck knowing that because like I said I've been out for a few years so I haven't kept up on anything but if that's fine if you want to lower if you want to lower the bar to get people in but at the end you should be able to do everyone should be equal at the end because we're all getting the exact same training you can go to Paris Island. You can go to to San Diego, to a male a male uh, recruit company, and then a female recruit company. They are doing the exact same thing, the exact same thing. So, yes, lowering the standards to get people in. Cool. What's really gonna what you're really gonna find out about people is both in training. And then the unfortunate part of actually being out there getting in the stuff. But I guess what like I guess I said, I'm more kind of pointing to is by proxy of you lowering the requirements and getting more people in, I think that opens itself up for these things to happen more often. The wrong people. Because you're getting more of the wrong people. But and also on the, on the flip side, you could be getting more of better people. So it's a it's a double edged sword where you're either if you're lowering physical requirements, you're lowering education requirements, how could you possibly be getting better people by lowering those requirements? I don't know a whole lot about educational, to be honest with you, because I'm I'm not, on paper, I'm probably one of the dumbest people we ever meet. <laughs> I'm sure that's uh, not honestly. true. Honestly. No. Uh, honestly, God, I'll, I'll I'll put I'll put it out there. My high school cumulative GPA when I graduated was one point seven two. Yeah, you're just like the rest of us. <laughs> no, I, I, how you do in high school to me doesn't have anything to do with your intelligence. Yeah. So and and, and I and I completely agree with that. So back back to the point, you know, it's it, it you're both right. Lowering lowering anything is making room for more things to happen like this flip side it's allowing people that want to want to do better but if we're hiring you know joe schmo off the street that hasn't done a pull up a day in his life but you put him through training now he's become one of the best marines one of the best police officers he or she has become one of the best marines best police officers that you've ever met and they're able to do that's why i said at the beginning yes lower them do whatever i honestly didn't even know that they lowered the standards i i knew i know that there's a different female standard that there is a male standard obviously i don't really know too much about the female standard but at the end they should be able to do what men are what the men are capable of doing so i guess I you're more so saying strong, like if they get accepted in at a low end requirement that if they don't hit the, the original requirements at a certain point, then it's like, okay, you can't be here. Cause you didn't, you didn't, you didn't equip yourself up to the point we we needed you to be. That's something I could honestly right. be okay with. 
like you like in the police academy you have to run it doesn't matter how old you are i'm almost positive it's across the board actually i don't have my folder but if you're a male between the age of like 24 and 30 i think it is excuse me you have to be able to do 35 push-ups you have to do 22 sit-ups and you have to be able to run a mile and a half in under 11 minutes and 58 seconds. If you're over, if you run a mile and a half, 11.59, you have to retest. Like, they are strict about it. So you said they separate it by you, age groups? You said, what, 24 to 34? Yeah, they separate 24 to, uh, 24 to 30, I think is what it is. Actually, I think I could pull it up. Hada, uh, PT standards and do, is that a consistent thing or they only have to do it once that's i'm not i'm just unsure. So you have to do it before you have to do it before and after Interesting. so any okay here we go so any ale this one isn't updated oh yeah it is so any male under the age of 29 has to do 40 sit-ups in a minute, 33 push-ups in a minute, and run a mile and a half in 11 minutes, 58 seconds. A female has to do 35 sit-ups because given the female, female, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anatomy, lack of a better term. They're lesser, cur- lesser physical do strength. Have <laughs> the, their, their core strength is actually stronger than men's. Yeah, that I so did. The know. five below, the five below on the sit ups, I can kind of understand. Uh, females under the age of twenty nine have to do eighteen push ups in a minute, and that makes sense. They don't have as strong or as big of a chest grouping as males do. And there's only a seventeen. There's only a seventeen second difference in the mile and a half run. So yes, there are different. There's different goals. But if you don't meet them as a in, in in the academy, you don't you don't graduate. You don't even sit for the test. And I hear what you're saying. Well, yeah, but oh, there, ahead, there used to only be one standard, and now there's there's two standards. There's the male standard and the female standard. And so that and you know you brought to light something that I honestly didn't think about, Donnie, was, oh, you can have these two separate standards in the beginning. But we have to someone way up higher or someone way down below where I'm at has to come meet and be like, okay, expected to do the same job. Why don't we have a combined, uh, a combined, you know, standard for at the end of the academy that yep. everyone has. To, yeah, the combined standard that everyone has to meet. And like that's I, something I can, I can agree with. That I would be all for. That I think would be brilliant. You know, let them come in at different standards, but if you want to carry the badge, you have to meet the one standard of the people that carry it. Because uh, you don't want to be out there and find out that the person that you're with, you know, isn't capable because they, you know, had to meet some kind of lesser standard. The easiest example I can even bring up is like, you know, uh, like the burning building example. I think it's the common one that most people use to kind of, you know, get this point across, which is like, you know, say I do, you, you do get a female officer and she's the one that comes out and you're on the third floor of a building. And, you know, the thing is somebody like me, like, you know, I'm, I'm knocked out. I'm all dead weight, you know, all like whatever, 210 pounds of me. You know, I really don't think I'm going to have a really, I think I have a much better chance if the officer who responded to that call was a male, just given the fact that their stature and physicality is going to be much more in tune with what the standard should be, obviously, because just males by nature are stronger, faster. And so that's what I call into question. It, it, I, I'm all for everybody having equal opportunity, but if a woman can't meet the standard of, you know, being able to deadlift 250 pounds, then, you know, that's not somebody I want showing up to save me or, you know, let alone, like, if that's the only person who can save my wife and I'm across town at work and it ends up being by some nature that she couldn't or wasn't strong enough or wasn't fast enough. Those are things where it's like people can build some strong resentment from from things like that. If you come to find out, like, hey, the reason why, the, you know, they couldn't save this person. Well, I mean, she just wasn't strong enough. She couldn't carry him down those flights and she was going to die. And, 
And so her training tells her like, you know, protect yourself, make sure you get home. And so she just, just had to make, you know, uh, a decision. And that's going to be the decision that she makes. Now, obviously it's a hypothetical and there's a lot more that can go into that. But I think most people kind of have this feeling, I guess maybe not most people, but I have this feeling that the more that we do this, where we lower these standards, we make these things equitable for everybody to get in. It's just opening it up to the fact that you're going to be in one of these situations where the person cannot help you or let alone they, they, they just start dumping <laughs> their magazine into your car while you're sitting there in handcuffs. And so I think that's why we're kind of me and Donnie are both really kind of strict on the standard because it seems whether it's by proxy of social media, but I don't really think it's that. I think it really is happening in real life, which is these instances and the occurrences of not just police brutality, but what would you say? Just police inability. Incompetence. Incompetence, yeah. yeah, yeah. Has just been increasing yeah. across the board. And so when when it becomes, you know, and then, you know, people see in the news like, well, they just dropped the standards for the Navy SEALs for everybody so women more women can join. While this is happening, I think most people take that as like, oh, dude, like, like, why would they do that? You know, it just, it seems so counterproductive to the problem that's happening. You know, I will say I found myself in a position where I knew the cops were coming for me and I was like, all right, well, I'm a hellion. So I'm going to fight these cops when they show up and, you know, some five foot, nothing blonde police officer shows up and says, Hey buddy, what's wrong? And you just lose all that fight right out of you. <laughs> you know, I, and that, that's very fair. <laughs> But I I can also speak from experience that, you know, my sister, she's five foot two, and she's probably one of the most bad man with jammas I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Just looking at her, you would think that she couldn't hurt a fly. But honest, honest to God, I'd I'd take her out with I'd take her out doing anything. Yeah, and I'm not, and I'm not, and she, I'm not saying all females. And you also got to think. I just think it's on a bell curve. It's more likely that a female will be lesser capable than a male given in, in this profession. Absolutely, and and I agree with you to an extent. Just be, just because I'm also speaking on experience. Right. I've seen some of the tiniest women carry some of the heaviest dudes, even just in. And basic, you know, testing, uh, you know, the Marine Corps has a, a combat fitness test. And part of that is you have to carry, you have to uh, fireman carry someone. I, I can't remember how long it is, but I've seen some women carry some heavy dudes. And that's not even like, that's not even adrenaline pumping through their body. Could they meet the male standards? Absolutely not. But it's also how they prove themselves. So you got to think. Yes, they may not be able to meet the male standards, but they've also proven to whoever in situations that were life or death that they have been able to handle their own. They could do down whatever, what have you, and still go home the next day. So it, you, you also have the same thing with guys that don't meet the standards, but yet they're some of the most baddest dudes that I know. They're able to, they're, they're able to make sure that I'm going home. They could be no more than a buck fifty soaking wet, fresh out of the pool. So it's. So I guess I you're know. saying you've it's, seen you've seen essentially a lot of people who you wouldn't imagine could do something, do he's, something. He's witnessed the exceptions. Yeah, I witnessed the exceptions both work out good. I've witnessed the exceptions work out bad. I've seen the exceptions that I thought weren't going to work out good that ended up being one of the best people that I know. Versa. So I guess, I mean, that that's, I guess that's a bit more comforting, right? Because if you're someone who's been in it for, I mean, a decade now in two different departments, military and DMT, that's comforting. And I imagine though, maybe this is also maybe a proxy of the fact that you're in Ohio, like we are a bit more, you know, country yee yee. So that maybe is it's maybe yeah. why some of the females <laughs> yeah. are a bit more uh, capable of throwing a haystack <laughs> around. But it's good though. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And I mean, honestly, like I appreciate you know any any service member, male or female. Like I mean, I do appreciate the fact that you put yourselves on the line. I don't appreciate when bad things happen, obviously. But you know, I, I can't fault any woman who puts herself on the line and puts her, you know, her 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 life and soul on contract for eight years to do these things. So uh, you know, I don't want to get my words twisted. I guess I'm more so proposing right. the premise that I think an easy fix would be to eliminate females even being in these professions entirely. But I, I know that you disagree on that because you've seen the exceptions. 
absolutely absolutely you know like i said i disagree on that too if they can meet the standards fine with it well that's what i was okay with they should get new standards i i'd be okay with that i don't think they should all be removed like i said i've been in positions where if the guy showed up and he was my size you know he shows up he's 6'2 225 30 pounds I was ready to fight that guy. I know he's got a gun. I've been pepper sprayed. I've been tased. I was not a good young man. Um, but, you know, a five foot nothing blonde shows up and starts really caring about why you're having a bad day and causing so much trouble. It really does take a lot of the fight out of you. So I'm, I'm certainly not saying that they don't have their place. I just I wish we didn't just keep lowering standards for the military and the police for just anybody can do it because they've always wanted to do it you know we just i think we should have a a real standard for the people that do these jobs because they are hard jobs they're some of the hardest jobs we have and we should be making sure we have the best people doing them and maybe it's like a six month period where you just like you you know you can come in it's like dude even if you can't do a single pull up we're going to give you six months from this point in time and at the end of the six months, if you can hit the original standard that was set in 19, you know, 84, I believe it was Semper Fire, then you're good. You can go in. But, you know, if you don't, I don't want to I don't want to see, you know, these like, you know, these equity arguments coming in and be like, well, like, you know, it's just like you didn't make the standard. You didn't make the cut. And then, you know what? Honestly, to, to make it even more inclusive, put like a two year stop in it. Every two years, you know, you can come in and try. But you only get six months to meet the standard. And if you don't meet the standard, you're going to have to wait two years and do it all over again. And then, honestly, I think if you do it that way, you're only going to have the women who are the exceptions. I think that's just by nature, it's going to it's going to work itself out, you know, kind of like how a grain you're sifting through grain to get the rocks out, sand bits. I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm quicker to to go full expulsion on females just because I think there's more to it than just the physical aspect. I hear what Donnie's saying where. You know, you get a nice, you know, you get a nice pretty blonde female to come out. It's going to entirely change your perspective because you're expecting, you know, six oh, foot four Chad. With pretty. Or even without that has nothing pretty. to do with pretty. I'm not, I'm not going to hit I'm not going to hit a lady. Right. Like I was, if some big guy came up to me, no, no problem. You know, I pick on people my own size. That's not a problem. I'm not going to hit some tiny lady. It has nothing to do with looks. Well, even without looks with it, I'm, I'm talking more about the mental aspect because men and men and women more oh, I so. I thought you were like saying, well, Donnie thought she was hot, so he calmed down. No, 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 no. <laughs> I am agreeing with you that they're like, they're by proxy of their symbiotic nature to men. Like you're going to have a different, you know, disposition to them when you're approached by them, given that context. I'm saying that, forgive me, for, the, for expelling these females, right? It's not just the physical attributes, right? There's other things too. Like, I mean, obviously hand-eye coordination is a bit physical, but it's the decision-making, right? It's the leadership. It's all of these other qualities that aren't, that are, you know, intangibles that can't really be measured. But if we have an understanding as a society with, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years of data, and you put these women on a bell curve and you can see, you know, proportionally the density of them, it's it they're, they're, it's much more probable that you're going to fee, find a man a lot more probable that the average man has the capacities for leadership, um, discernment, quick thinking, judgment. Those are things that like you can't really measure, but everyone knows is true. So we're I, I get where we can kind of you know we can sift and make sure we only get like the bulky females and the Sheilas of the world from Australia, but that still doesn't mitigate the mentality aspect, right? Like. How, what what kind of ways can you really discern a female's leadership capacity? I don't think you can without getting to a point where she makes a mistake and then you go, oh, you made a very poor decision. But are we willing to accept dead people for the willingness to just want to be inclusive? I think most people would argue, no, like it's not worth, you know, someone's daughter dying from a poor decision just because we wanted women to be in the force. Now, that doesn't mean that men so, also can't make bad decisions, but it's also statistically true that females would be much more quicker to go to emotionality than a man would go to it. Well, let me ask you this, Aaron. What is, what's your take on a female that has been, that asked their male counterparts for a position of a department? You're saying a, a female who's passed all the physical? She passed all the physical like stuff? passed everything. Like, she's passed everything. 
interview, like she's going up against dudes that have been officers for about the same time. Like how, I guess, I guess the nature of the question is how do you feel about a female being the sole leader of the department, the chief, that makes me the feel, one that everyone answers to. Well, that makes me feel very uncomfortable. I think even if you wanted to go to a biblical perspective, I think that's entirely like just living outside the nature of God and the physics that he set for us. Um, I don't know why you would want to install a female in a leadership position in a male dominant profession. I think that opens yourself up to just a plethora of issues. Um, I mean, and more so there, there's so many other things I could take this to, but I mean, I'm sure you remember the Tennessee, the Tennessee girl who got a train ran on her by six other police officers. Um, I believe that was in right. Tennessee when that had happened. Like there's so much more that gets opened up to that you wouldn't have if you entirely expelled females from the profession. Um, you know, and obviously like, it, like, yeah, like you're going to lose and miss out on opportunities for, you know, women who could have been Joan of Arc like figures who were in those positions. I just can't sit here and weigh the negative externalities over just giving these women a chance and two, I'm going to take that a step further. Like, I don't even think it's a woman's place to even be in these positions. I think that her place is to be in the home. It should be, you know, much closer to home, as close as she can make it to home. You know, obviously in modern society, these things are a lot more harder to achieve, given the fact that inflation's out of control, the economy's just in the gutter. I understand that they're hard decisions to make, but I'm speaking idealistically if I could move things in a direction. I just leave on idealistically. It's very pragmatic to simply go, okay, we can eliminate one gender from taking all this field. Especially because I would argue to you, I have every statistic of, you know, uh, of male of male nature versus female nature to back me on this argument for why women shouldn't be in a physically dominant male dominant position, let alone a leader at that profession. So. What. Given what you say about women in the police force what do you say to the guys that think they are think they're capable of doing it but end up doing the same thing acting the same way that you would envision a female acting in, in the police force like what 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 do, what do you say to the guys that are not the alpha male type they are very feminine and they can't do the job but uh, they but just because they're male, they, sh they should be able to, quote unquote. Um, I would say, what is wrong with you? That'd be my first thing I would probably say. Aaron's not a big fan of feminine men. No, uh, no, not at all. Oh, like, I'm not either. Absolutely not. Drives me the, <laughs> drives me up the fucking wall or my the dang on wall. Sorry, my yeah, bad. You're it's, good, dude. You're totally just, good. You're fine. Um, I, I, it's just there's there's so many. Everything that you just mentioned, I've also seen in the, in the male counterpart of i've seen it, it but it's just not spoken of because today's society it's still harped on that man you don't need to cry you don't have feelings you don't need to say anything like there's dudes out here getting sexually assaulted sexually harassed and they don't say anything because guy doesn't like being you know hit on by a girl you know what i'm saying but it, yeah. it could make them very uncomfortable and they don't want to say anything that's just one point it's just i want your viewpoint on replace everything that you just said with a guy with a feminine man i mean with that again that goes back to my thing what i had proposed which is the discernment from the elders the elders right like you know a lot of society originally was dictated by that right the elders the style the oh, wisest yeah. ones um obviously it's, it you know you can't really apply that to modern day society we have a constitution a lot of things to prevent that from taking place um, but if you have a man who is very clearly displaying all of the characteristics of a female and I, I don't see any reason why, for one, if it's a brotherhood, this should be getting addressed at the personal level. Like there should be someone taking him under his wing being like, Hey man, what's going on? Like, um, we need you to get your weight up, dude. Like, you know, we, we need you to, uh, we need you to, we need you to get your head on straight. I, I think there should be some kind of at least personal you know, transaction there from the inside before it ever went to any kind of like discernment from, you know, adjudication that he's getting booted off the force or he's getting waived or suspended. Um, but I guess when you say that out loud, I, I don't think you can really do anything if the guy's just like displaying effeminate characteristics. But I think if those effeminate characteristics are showing themselves on the job while he's doing things, then at that point it's like, okay, are we willing, you know, 
Do you think it's okay that the rest of the officers are taking on a bigger piece of the pie to allow this effeminate guy to have a position here, knowing that he's only carrying 20% of what everybody else is carrying? I don't think that's fair to the police force. I don't think that's fair to the people who, who need the cops when they show up because you're running the risk of the chance of that guy being the only one that can show up to a call. And I don't think for the sake of, of, of equity and equality that we should put people in bad decisions when we know there could have been something you could have done before that. Now, again, I'm only saying this because you're saying it with the foreknowledge that, you know, we know this guy's effeminate. We know this guy's acting and behaving all the ways that a female would. Well, then I would say at that point, you would treat him like a female. You would boot him out of the force and you'd do the same thing. You'd be, no, you're not meeting these standards that we have set. You can't do it. You've consistently shown that you are much quicker to emotion. And it'd be kind of how the acorn cop guy would have would have got fired, right? Like it was clear that you did not have the emotional capacity in this given situation. But again, though, in that context, you still have to wait for the moment that he has made a mistake. And it's lucky that the guy didn't die who was handcuffed in the back of that cruiser. But it's again sitting here being like, do you wait? Do you do the decision before he makes a mistake? Or do you let him ruin someone's life and then discipline him? It's tough to navigate, I'm right? <laughs> like it, it's yeah, tough to navigate. So. And I know I'm taking a hard position, but like I'm doing so from a very what strong belief. Now? Right. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but I guess if, you, if you will pick me apart, you, here for. go ahead and pick me apart. Cause I know you probably might disagree with something I said, Donnie. Oh, not I mean, I, I personally, I don't have any problem. I, I, you know, a female police chief, that's administrative work. That's organizational work. They typically are pretty good at that. I don't see any kind of issue. Um, I don't have as much, uh, of the, you know, women belong in the household as, as you do. I don't, it doesn't really bother me. My wife works, you know, we both work. It's hard to raise a family these days if you're not both working. So. No, 100%. Well, again, though, too, like, yours is a bit better because she's working remote and from home. Like, you you would rather her remote work remote than you would rather her be out and about, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I don't think you'll find anybody that works remote that would rather go back to the office. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go back. I, I was more <laughs> so saying I, that, I'm sure she, she that you'd rather have her near thing. you. She wouldn't want me to go to the office. Yeah, that's true. And I can understand. I think most wives would have that same feeling, though, too. But that's out of them wanting the closeness, you know, and because it's your significant other, right? Like, you don't want to be away from them. I mean, I would, I'm assuming, you know, this this matrimony is in, in bliss. So, obviously, you would want to be near each other. But you'll go I'm ahead. I'm actually shackled right now <laughs> to this wall over here. Can you show wow. the cuffs to the camera? <laughs> I think twice if you need help. Well, I didn't want to cut... <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off, uh, River. What, what, what would you oh, disagree with what I what I said then? Well, just because I've been under, I've been under female leadership. Again, it just comes from it comes from experience. Um, you know, you could your views are completely warranted. It's just you know, sometimes you have to experience it to be like, okay, like. Right? Some alpha females out there that could probably do the job better than one of the guys out there. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that's just, I mean, I agree with that just because most men are, they're being subverted and that's been happening for some time now. The food's poisonous, men's testosterone levels are below the floor. I mean, I bet if some of that was gone, we could see the differences between male and female a lot better than what we do right now. But it's clear that there's been like this gray paste, you know, 1984, Aldous Huxley, like, dystopian every we're all one gender or you're no genders or you're this and it's very clear that you know the, the health of the average day human is rapidly falling you know it's degrading every single day yeah and and again i just wish to make my uh, clear myself up like i don't think that women are incapable of having these positions i'm just saying it is more often than not that they will be incapable than they will be capable and I mean, it comes, I mean, we're doing a full circle here where it comes back to Acorn Guy, where, you know, if you threw, if you threw a, a female girl there, that, you know, maybe she would have reacted different. Or maybe if you threw some of, everyone reacts to, to danger differently. 
Uh, but as a police officer, you've got to be a little bit more tactical in, in your decision making, especially at that at that rate of speed. Because you have less than a heartbeat to really make that decision. Like I said, I've seen I've seen some females make You might have muted yourself, brother. Did we lose you, River? At least the story had a happy ending. They caught the squirrel. He's being charged with assault with a deadly weapon. And he... Uh, as well, that ends well. Oh, man, did we lose River? I think the brother just muted himself. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, boy. Can you hear me now? Yeah. My AirPod died, so I'm going to switch over to my gaming headset, but... Oh, you're good, man. But, yeah, it just... I don't know. Like your your views aren't wrong, and they they do make sense. And but like I said, until you until you are able to actually see it in situations like that, where common human is put in a situation where they have to do common things, that's where you'll see the difference between your civilian and then everyone else that does. That does our job. All right. We're coming up 24 hours. Sit down. Me and a bunch of female cops. I'm going to do it, you know, once a week for the <laughs> next four months. <laughs> we'll see what my opinion changes. <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and say, man, we have just passed Can't the two hour that. mark. Um, River, I thank you very much for your time. I want to go ahead and move these over to closing statements before we go ahead and we'll go too long. So your AirPod didn't make it all the way through. Um, but let me go yeah. ahead and turn it to uh, you, Donnie. Trip. Anything that you want to say as a closing okay. statement, man? Go ahead. Yes, I have a closing statement for River. I'm really glad you made it. I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, one um, thing I do talk next. about on the show a lot is is voting in your best interest. If you're going to be a, a police officer, do just a little bit of political research. Figure out which side is trying to destroy your profession and which side backs up your profession. And then vote in your own interest. And I think it'll be it'll be good. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, Donnie. I've honestly, I haven't really thought about it like that. Definitely well, and that I don't know if you've listened to the show, but I'm very, I'm, I'm very anti-establishment, anti-authoritarian, and I always thought uh, the police were going to be the the boot that was on my neck. But uh, in the last couple of years, I've realized it's it's actually the first institution that the machine tried to destroy was policing as a profession so now i kind of feel like you guys are on my side yeah absolutely we don't get me wrong probably put it at 75 to 80 percent of, of the entire forces on on the civilian side like we're, we're good dudes we're good females we're just, we just decided to put a badge on in a uniform only difference so, uh, yeah, it's, you've definitely helped me look at it some different ways for sure. Yeah, hopefully it was eye opening for you. I mean, obviously, I'm, I don't expect to change your mind entirely, but especially with what I mean, I'm going to echo exactly what Donnie said. I would encourage you to at least, especially because of what the profession you're taking on, it would it would benefit you greatly to at least have some level of your foot in the water when it comes to these politics, but especially because you're going to experience so many different changes that are going to be coming from people that are outside your department. And, and you're going to be wondering why that's happening, or at least what you can do to mitigate against it or know what's coming down the line in case you do end up in another position where you're going to have to boot out because they're going to try to make you do something you don't want to do. But with that being said, is there anything that you wanted to shout out river before we go ahead and sign off? Oh, uh, just, I really do appreciate you guys for having me on. Hopefully I was able to um, give you guys kind of a more inside edition on, you know, what it's like from someone from my perspective and kind of your brain around some of the things that we may think about even just going to a call or around or deal with a call afterwards. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for allowing me to kind of put my voice out there and, you know, whoever finds this, hopefully they find some peace and knowing that someone else is going through the same stuff and got my ways figured out. It may not work for everybody else, but I highly encourage encourage anyone that's either getting into this profession or that's been in this profession 
still trying to figure out ways to get around those traumatic calls. Hopefully this kind of maybe gives you a footwork of it, or, you know, if you have any questions, somehow reach out to me. Um, my username on here is, is on there. So I, and I get on discord a lot, um, but hopefully I was able, I was able to voice something out for you to make your life easier. Cause that's, that's what my, that's what my duty is to make your life easier in any way, shape or form. It definitely, man. It was, that's, it's beautiful having you on here, dude. Uh, I mean, thank you for coming on and we appreciate you, but also, man, thank you for putting your life on the line every single day, you know, going out and doing things that a lot of other people don't want to be dealing with. It's not a position most people can handle and it's, a, and even fewer can actually stay through it and, and keep it going. So, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart and everyone else I imagine in the community also thanks you too. And with that being said, just one final thing, man, it just, if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, on X, follow me, all of those places, follow us on Spotify, River, yeah, you're going to see this episode on Spotify, I'll put it on Facebook, the link too, share it with people if you want people to, to hear what you had to say as well, we'd love the proliferation of the show, and share the show if you enjoyed it, uh, with that being said, guys, that was the 10th episode, we made it to double digits, uh, hopefully we get to 20, <laughs> the only other announcement I did want to make is the, I'm down to essentially all by myself for Sunday episodes. Um, so I'm going to have to think about what to do moving forward for Sunday. I had imagined we're actually probably going to go ahead and just essentially go to two political episodes a week, Sunday and Monday. And then the Christian episodes will move to specials, all still being housed under offensively accurate. Still trying to work on upping the volume, but enough of the talk and enough of the ranting. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, River. It was a blessing. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care. Peace. And... Amen. Crisis King. God bless. Peace out, y'all.